Hello all. Welcome back to our uh, Monday morning Bible study. Today we're going to be talking about the nature of sin. And we're going to be in Isaiah 59 for the most part. Um, let's go ahead and get started with 59, Isaiah 59, 1 through 5. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They utter, utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a, a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken and an adder is hatched. Now, what exactly is sin? Consider the first sin ever committed. Adam and Eve deliberately disobeyed God's order not to eat from a certain tree. As a result, God sent them out of the Garden of Eden and they were separated from God's presence. Previously, they had been able to walk and talk with God like a family together in one house, but now they never would be allowed back in. Humanity's relationship with God was damaged from that point on. Now, some thing, something to think about here. What evidence do you see in this world that everyone has sinned? Now, everyone has sinned. The point of this whole lesson is we are sinners. And on our own, we can't do nothing about it. Um, let's not confuse sin simply with bad things we do. Sin is so much deeper than that. Sin is what we do when we place our desires and our agendas above God. When we think everything we're doing is more important than God, we consider ourselves more important than God. It's deep. It's not just a piece of fruit. By eating what God said not to eat, we are placing our small choice ahead of God. And to place anything ahead of God is rebellion, rebellion and mutiny. Sin puts everyone on a level playing field. Since all rebellion is rebellion, we are all seen as sinful people. No one can justify his or her sin by saying, at least I'm not as bad as that person. Each of us has a sick heart set on rebellion against a holy and perfect God. We all sin. No matter where you come from, no matter where you've been, no matter where you're going, we're all sinners. Isaiah 59, 6 through 8. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes. Acts of violence mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks along them will know peace. Now, that is the idea that Isaiah was pointing to in this passage. We can't cover up our sinful works because on our own, we're completely unable to repair the damage our sin does. Our deeds are evil deeds and they pursue evil schemes. Even the good we attempt to do to cover our sin is married with sin. We simply cannot make up for our sin. We can't just do more good things to outweigh the bad things and call the relationship good. As a prop, as a prophet Isaiah said later, all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. You can't, you can't work your way to cover up the sin. Sin is sin. No matter how much good you do, sin is sin. The picture Isaiah painted goes against how most people view themselves. Most people won't deny that they've made mistakes and done things they shouldn't have, 
but they see themselves as basically good people. Isaiah is clear, as he said it in verse 8, We have made our own roads crooked. We've laid the road we walk on, and we can't straighten it. We can't do anything about our sin. Now, when you think about the, the people in the world that you meet every day, maybe your own life, what are some common ways people try to cover up their sinless, um, their sinfulness? You know, how do you, how do we as as people try to cover up our sinful nature by doing good sometimes, by um, helping out somebody that needs some help? Um, that's all good, and we need to keep doing that. But it does not cover up the sin. Isaiah fifty nine nine through thirteen. So justice is far from us. And righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if we were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance but it is far away for our offenses are many in your sight and our sins testify against us our offenses are ever with us and we acknowledge our iniquities rebellion and treachery are against the lord turning our backs to the lord to our god inciting revolt and oppression uttering our lives our hearts have conceived Isaiah was writing to people who were spiritually dead, given over completely to their addiction to sin. He described them as people who grope like the people without eyes, stumble as if they were twilight, and growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. Isaiah also told us why they were like this. Our offenses are many in our sight. Instead of improving themselves, as many people think they can do, the people's sins were only growing and multiplying. They, could, they couldn't hide who they were. They were sinners, and their sins testified against them. Now, um, think about this. How does God's intervention bring hope to our struggle with sin? How does God's intervention bring hope to our struggle with sin? Think about that. And before the coming... To faith in Christ, we all are in the same boat, spiritually dead, enslaved to sin, and in possession of a debt greater than we could pay on our own, we stand no chance of paying it back or working our way back to life. On our own, we were less than powerless. We were blind people stumbling down the street, dead people with no hope for rev revival. God decided that something had to change. And since none of us could do it ourselves, he would, and he did. It was God who took the first step toward us. It was God who delivered a way for us to be free of the debt of our sins. It was God who made it so that our relationship with him could be repaired. Now we are sinners, and on our own, we can do nothing about it. But God took this first step forward. And with God's help, we can have that relationship with him again. Let's, let's talk about some things we can do to, to live it out. You can confess. Admit that you are a sinner who has fallen short of God's standard. Confess your sin to him and ask for forgiveness. He is faithful and just to forgive you. you can prevent. Evaluate where you are most prone to give into temptation. Being tempted is not to sin, but it can easily lead to sin. Draft some safeguards to help you avoid temptation in the first place. If you know something that, that you struggle with, try to avoid that. Try to go a different direction. You know, like they say, walk on the other side of the street sometimes. Yeah, and you can be accountable. Reach out to one or two believers in whom you can confide. Talk through areas in which you are weak and ask them to hold you accountable 
and walk with you so that you would not fail. That's one of the things I think we have uh, could do more of in our world today. You know, have some accountability partners, have some friends, uh, some buddies, maybe some, some fishing buddies or, or whatever, and, um, and just confide in them and, and them in you and hold each other accountable to God's way. Um, that's the only way we can, can be better. Um, and just remember, we can always ask God for a greater awareness of our sinfulness. We can thank him for saving us from our sin and for empowering us to, to live lives that honor him. You know, and as you pray every day, pray that God will help you find your way, help you find your way to him, that God will help you and empower you to reveal your sin so maybe you can overcome it and, um, and find a better way. And just remember, um, God is always there. No matter where you're at in your life, no matter what sin that you think that is too big of a sin that God can never forgive, God is there for you no matter what. No matter what's going on in your life, God is there for you. Everybody else may have abandoned you, but God will never abandon you. Just remember that. All right, I appreciate uh, all you guys sticking with me today and um, going through this Bible lesson. As, uh, as always, we do this every Monday. If you want to subscribe to my channel, um, just hit the subscription button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified when I post one of my videos. And, um, and as always, I accept all feedback just to make this better. And I hope you guys have a great day and a wonderful week. Thanks a lot. God bless and goodbye.